Hi, my name is Doug Morton, and I'll be highlighting the advanced steel topic today. In this video, we'll be looking at the steel construction technical checking tool in advanced steel. The steel construction technical checking tool can be used to determine if connecting elements have been placed correctly throughout the model. We will cover what the tool is looking for, how to adjust the values of the tool, and what is involved with fixing any errors it might find. I've made a small model here. These connections are all included together inside of a joint box to make editing easier, but the process will be the same as you go through your model. You may want to check so that way you're not doing all the checking at the end of the modeling process. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, I want to run the tool to check for the steel construction technical checking, and that is on the extended modeling tab. It's under checking this section here. You come up, you'll see uh, an image or an icon that looks like a bolt with a wrench beside it. When I left click on that, it's going to go through the model and it's going to check for any errors. Now these errors are dependent on the factors that are used throughout the model for your different elements. We'll explain that in a little bit. But you can see in here that I have a lot of different issues, right? So. It comes in, it will tell you all the issues that are in here. And you'll notice that some of these lines are saying that the bolt pattern are too close to the object's edge. And the other ones are saying the distance of bolts in the bolt pattern is too small. In other words, the space in between the bolts is too small. So I have both issues right now because I've made these bolts larger. What you can do to find which connection it is that's causing the problem is you can come in and you can double click on it. So I'm just trying to move this over here. There we go. You can see that I have the lines. These are clip angles because there's two elements in the clip angle or sometimes four elements in the clip angle, depending on the, the connection. You may see, you know, these are doubled. So on one clip angle, for example, the first one, it's one, 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 one. Um, and basically in that connection, there's two clip angles. And it says on one clip angle, the distance is too small. And the other on that same clip angle, it's too close to the edge. And then the next one says the distance is too small and it's too close to the edge. So the, those two clip angles in the same connection both have the same problem. So that's why the ID is the same. It's just looking at this as connection one, connection two, connection three. And if I scroll to the bottom, you can see I have 57 different uh, basically connections with an issue that I need to resolve. Right. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, the idea is to find the connection with the issue. So just double click on one of the lines and it'll bring you to that connection. You see it's highlighted now in red. I know this is the connection with the problem and I can go to the joint box, right click and look at the advanced joint properties. I can go through here to investigate what is it? Do I need to increase the space between the bolts? Do I need to change the bolt size? How do I determine what it is that is causing this problem. Well, to do that, you need to understand what it's looking at exactly. What it, why is it think it's a problem? The program itself will look at your bolt diameter. So the first thing it takes into consideration is the bolt diameter of the connection. And in here, you're gonna see it's the bolt diameter times the factor. And we'll, I'll show you where that is in a moment. And that's going to give you your minimum distance. So if I had a bolt like these ones here are one inch, and my factor is 1.5, then one inch times 1.5 is equal to one and a half inches. And that's the default for the distance from the edge of steel right now. So the minimum distance to the edge of steel is one and a half times whatever the diameter of bolt is. In between the bolts, the default factor is three and it will be for example one inch times three and that would be three inches minimum distance in between the bolts that it requires so where do we find these factors we know what the bolt size is and if we've looked at this and determined that's what we want the bolt size is good um, and i looked at my distance and i'm okay with the distance in between then maybe it's my factor that is off and i need to set that up so that way i don't get so many issues to change it, and I'll show you where that is. If you come to the Home tab, under 
management tools. I'm going to come into here and go to my defaults. By using the filter, I can come into here and say, I want to look for my factor. And I'm going to look for it using short and long text. And I'm going to go to my joints. When I go to joints general, you're going to see these four items include the word factor. In other words, these are my factors that I have to take into consideration when I'm determining my bolt distances. Now, by default, maximum edge distance and intermediate distance for holes for a maximum intermediate is turned to zero, which means it's basically turned off. It doesn't matter what the maximum distance is. Your steel can be as large as you like it, as long as we handle the minimum distance for the edge and the intermediate. So by turning, by setting it to zero, we've basically turned this off. Okay, so it's not going to check maximum distances. Below that, we have minimum edge distance factor for holes and minimum intermediate distance for holes. Now, the values that you see here, even at the top, are distances. And that doesn't make sense because if you remember, the factor that we use should be something like 1, 1 1.5, 3, 2. It's a multiplication factor times the diameter. So a sixteenth of an inch is not going to make sense, and neither is 1 eighth. So why does it do this? With the program itself initially being um, set up or created with metric values, what it's doing is these fields are looking at those values that were placed in here and assuming that they are measurements or distances. And it's converting from metric to imperial. So what we're seeing at the moment is not the actual factor. The 1 16th, 1 8th is not the factor. What we need to do is we need to see these values as they are in metric. So that way we can get a better idea or sense of what our factor actually is. Um, before we change that, just as a side note, you're going to see that in other areas, we also have factors that you may want to consider. So you have factors for bolt head diameter factors, uh, nut diameter factors, and so on and so forth. So what is the distance and the, the size around it in order to determine for collision checks and stuff like that. These two are going to be affected by the fact that they are being converted into Imperial. And you can see these values are incremented. So how do we change it? If I go to the home area, they have this unit selection section, which says define the units used by this management tool. So it's just in the management tools here, what are the units that get used? And I wanna change this to metric so I can see my factors properly. So I'm just going to switch over to millimeter. So it puts it into metric. I'll put decimal. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to do this temporarily. I'll hit apply. When you change units, it'll close all your tabs. And you're going to have to come back to the defaults and do that search again. So I'm going to come into here and I'll do factor. And if I want, I can do my short and long text. And under joints, I see all the items that are related to my factor. Now, I don't want to change the maximum edge or maximum intermediate. I want that to be uh, basically disabled so that way it doesn't see anything. But you can see it's set to zero. Now, if we look at minimum edge distance and minimum intermediate distance, the minimum distances, now these values make more sense, 1.5 and 3. So we can come into here now and we can say, I want my bolt diameter times, and you can see, 1.5, right, to determine what is the minimum edge distance. Okay, and that will give me my minimum edge distance. Minimum intermediate distance is three, so it would be one times three, which would be three inches as an intermediate distance or distance between bolts. So the 1.5 and three makes sense. This is good. If you want to change this, this is where you would change it. Come into the metric values like this, type in the factor that you want at this point. I want this to be just one times or you know, 1.75 or 1.25 or whatever the case may be. Determine what your factor will be and type it in. Once you have your factor set up, you can save it. That's this button up at the top right. It'll save those values for you. 
And here I'll change this just so we can see it very quickly and I'll come back in after. So 0.5. Okay. So that's the edge distance. And I'll, I'm, I'll mark these really small just so we can see what it, how it affects it. So I've saved those values. I'll come back to my model. And in my model, I'm going to reload those values that I saved because what it did is it wrote it to the database. Now I want to load those values from the database into my current environment. It would be the same as closing the program and opening it again. So I'm going to click on this and you can see it says reopen database. It's now loaded those values here. Now, if I do my steel construction technical checking, it'll run through the model. And you can see it says, check found no errors. Because all the values now fall within that range. So it takes, oh, if you got a one inch bolt times 0.5 or half and half, well, you only need to be half an inch away from the edge. So what I changed it to made it really small, but you can see it's taking that factor into account and now it's not finding any of the errors. So I'm just going to go back and just reset it to what it was. So that was 1.5 by default here and three inches for the intermediate distance, or three, not inches, but three for the intermediate distance. And I'll save that. Okay. But you can set these to whatever you like. Then just don't forget, come back here and reset this to your it's inch architectural 1 16th by default. Okay. And then that will allow you to see all the values that are in the management tools again in uh, Imperial. So that's where you would change or modify your factor. So if you need to adjust the factor, you can do it there. Now. If I were to come in and change the bolts, and I'll just do the first one here as an example, we'll go through the first two boxes. So the first one here, my bolt parameters, I'll switch this, let's change this to a half an inch, make it small. You can see it's really tiny, but just to give you an idea, my factors are back to being the default factors. But if I set the bolt parameters now to something that will allow it to work in that formula so that way it doesn't go across the edge. When I do my steel construction checking now, you can see no errors found. All right. So it's just a matter of determining is the bolt too large or is the factor off? But once you know your factors are good, if you look at your bolts and they are the right size, that's what you want to use. You can then be confident that it's the shape that you're bolting together that needs to be changed. So for example, if it's the clip angle, it might need to be larger. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for taking the time to watch and have a great day.